Hey, I don't know if you heard, but we just had a big development in the unfolding Spygate investigations. It's just been revealed. What's up, dude? Hey, I'm not using the headphones. <laughs> Bro, what are you going to put in the green screen? I don't know. <laughs> A graffiti wall. <laughs> so you freaking, bro, you, you, you like getting all professional. Uh, yeah. Are you gonna like have enough room for me in the studio? <laughs> Hard to tell. <laughs> Hard to tell. I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> All right, let me shut some shit down. See what these fools are doing. Who's awake? Who's awake? Ah. Oh, yeah. All right, let me get OBS started. It's not going to be as bright as it was because it's not as sunny as the last time. Yeah, look at, look at the... Uh... See how this is now? Yeah. No background on here because of the green screen. Uh-huh. It's neat. What do you mean? So so what's it look like to you behind behind you? It's just black. I got to change some things. Like my face gets weird because the lighting's bad. But uh, I look like uh, um, Terminator. <laughs> like, a little, like a little bit is metal right there. Oh, because of the green screen. Yeah. So, like, where – I don't know if you can see it real well. You can't see anything. Well, because I'm not in the green screen. Oh, you're, you're not on the Facebook Live. I'm an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Never mind. You got too much going on. All right. Start recording. Shut up. You got too much going on. No, nah, it's all good. There's the <laughs> – there he is. There's a sweet face you all remember. Well, never mind. Oh, there he is. Uh, got a goofy connect. Hey, there's your little chip tooth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Bro, but this is like my favorite mug. I mean, this little OBX so, action. Yeah, whenever you guys went on vacation. Yeah. That's awesome. How'd you chip it? I, I think the dishwasher did it. Dude, we haven't used our dishwasher in at least six months. I swear. The thing what? sucks. It sucks. We need a new yeah. one. I'm not a big fan. Yeah, it almost seems like even if you do get a new one, it doesn't matter. They all still suck. Like there's commercials yeah, this, this one for them sucking. Yeah, this one's two it's about two years old. So it's not like, you know. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Arthur, sometimes clean the top rack. Sometimes it won't. You know, just if it feels like it. It's annoying. But, but with all my daggone kids, you know. Oh, I know. Well, you know what I'm, I'm irritated about right now? Is we just bought new pots and pans because um, the non-stick ones that we had before, everything stuck to them because we scratched them so many times. Ah. 
So we just bought these new ones maybe, I don't know, a month ago. What do you think happened? They're scratched. Yeah. Ah, they're scratched. And it, I think it's just because whenever you throw them in the, in the sink, you throw other stuff in the sink, and they just get nicked. Well, you know those people with those nice pans, man. They got, like, housekeepers. <laughs> What's that? They got housekeepers? Yeah. Yeah, that's me right now. Or, like, the, uh, you know, like, those, those chef guys. They just leave the pan there, and somebody else comes in and cleans it up. You know? I need a sous chef. So someone like to pre, pre-cut yeah. your stuff. Isn't that sous chef? Like whenever you're in a you're a sous chef, you are the person who, like, cuts everything up, gets things prepared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I'm not a big. I don't know French, but is sous like assistant? I don't know. I don't know. I just hear it on Chopped all the time. Yeah, sous chef. They're like the assistant to the to the to the chef. Yeah. Hey, uh, chat, can you guys hear Aaron? I put him on the speakers today, so I don't have to tape a headphone to my phone. I'm hoping that works. Bro, that was ghetto as hell. Don't yell at me. <laughs> don't yell at That's me. That's what we do. It's, it's 8 a.m., sir. Don't yell at me. <laughs> yeah, I started watching the uh, that Michael Jordan, well, not Michael Jordan, but the Chicago Bulls documentary, The Last Dance. Hey, but it, it's coming out Sunday, right? Or is it on? There's already two episodes out. Oh, I'm all in. I got to get it. Did you, were you a basketball fan, like, at all? Oh, or? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was a basketball fan in, in, in the 80s, like 86, 87. Oh, no so, kidding. So, like, the, uh, the Detroit Pistons. I was a big Atlanta Hawks fan. So, I was a Dominique Wilkins, Spud Webb. Mookie Blaylock, Moses Malone. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like college, like college, like the Fab yeah. Five in Michigan. Okay. I never got into into any college ball or any basketball in general. I still don't know all the rules of basketball. Well, it's because you're in Northwest PA, bro. Well, we have basketball. What? <laughs> <laughs> we have basketball. No, you got high school, you got some collegiate, but there's not a pro team here. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, like out out east, you got, I mean, you got the Sixers. Well, now you have the Nets, you got the Knicks. Who else is over there? Well, you got Nets, Knicks, you got Boston, you got, I, I mean, all up the east coast. It's uh, like, a, it's a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we. Ne- I never, I never played basketball until my. I played my senior year. I went out, uh, tried out for the team, ended up making the team. The only thing I feel like the only reason I made the team was a. I could shoot three pointers, and b. I just ran crazy up and down the court, playing defense yeah. all the time. I was just I never stopped. So he put me on the team, and. Uh, a week later, like I, I maybe went to a couple practices that I was officially part of the team, but um, I ended up having an interview at Finish Line in at the mall, and I, I got a job at the mall, so I had to kind of make a choice, work or play basketball. Ah, yeah, I, no, I decided in, in, uh, in New York, I mean, it's like that's the cheapest sport you could have, right? You know, so all you got to do is a basketball and you got a black top and. Yeah. Yeah. All you need is a ball. You're ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. I remember working at finish line. One of the best things for me was I, whenever I started, I had to unpackage boxes and stuff like that. So I was just in the back. I wasn't out selling things actually, Mm -hmm. but I got to see all the new gear before it came out onto the floor. Like all, because this was when LeBron was starting, and all of his stuff was coming out. So I got to see all of it before it actually went and hit the floor. It was pretty neat, bro. That guy looked like a man straight coming out of high school. I know now he looks like a monster. Yeah, he's he had a physique that was like he was cut from the gods, man. Like it was crazy. Well, that I mean, at, at eighteen, come on, man, unreal. 
Well, that was the thing that I was watching on, on uh, The Last Dance, too, on the second episode when, and this is something that happened to me also. Um, Michael Jordan went out, he tried out for a basketball team. I think it was his sophomore year. He went out for varsity and he didn't make it. He got, he just didn't make the team. Um, but he was only 5'11 at that time. So whenever yeah. he went back home, he talked to his mom. I mean, they had their whole thing. You know, they were both upset because she knew he wanted it so bad and he wanted to be on the team so bad. Um, but he just, he didn't make it. Well, he practiced, his mom told him, he goes, well, she said, you got to practice, you know, yeah. work all summer, go back out for the team, see what happens. So he did. And they cut to a, another guy. I think it was the, the high school coach. He goes, you know, yeah, he practiced all summer, but he also grew from 5'11 to 6'3. So that helped. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was, but, so not only hard work, but, you know, the hard work part is the one that got me because I got kicked off a baseball team my s- freshman year, actually. And, um, you know, you just have to work super hard to, to get back on the team, man. Yeah. Uh, I watched it. I think it was, uh, they did a documentary on him when he, when he, he went to go play basketball, uh, baseball. More exact. He, um, it, where it, it was called ride the bus. And it, it, they were talking about how the guy couldn't even, he couldn't hit a, a, a sinker. He couldn't hit a curveball, um, so he freaking he worked his butt off because he, that's just he's just that guy. Yeah, you know. And that was so that's what that's what got me, and that's what I was talking to Alyssa about too. Was like, there's there's two avenues you can go down when that stuff happens to you. You know, you can just stop and just quit and be like, ah, I'm just not good enough, or you put in the work to to get it done and make the team and and follow through on what you want to do. Bro, so, like, I think if things aren't meant to be, they're not meant to be. So, you know, what does my that son, what's that mean? Yeah, what does that mean? So, you can have all the athletic ability in the world, and if you don't want it, like, you could be so much more, and then if, if it's just not in the cards for you to, to yeah. go ahead and no, do I, it, yeah, I can not do it. Yeah, I mean, I get that part, like, from a from a mindset perspective. Like, if you don't want to play the game, that yeah. Then, then, yeah, I get that part. I just hate when people say it is what it is or it's going to be what it's going to be. Like, I, I always ask, like, what does that mean? But what is – because it's almost like sometimes it feels like a cop-out. Yeah, so – so did I explain my point to you or what? And like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's why I asked the question because I'm always like, well, that's such rhetoric, you know? That's just like being lazy where you don't want to actually explain what you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That's all. I say it too, yeah. so don't get me wrong. Um, but yeah. So that's I mean, what I, I was like, last night. What's that? That's what I was watching last night. I stayed in the couch after my run for the entire evening. Um, <laughs> so tired. Bro, so so my kids are really big into watching, because you know they're doing all the Olympic replays? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, so they're doing a lot of, like, Road to Rio, um, the Pyongyang uh, Olympics. And so my kids are really into gymnastics for some reason. I mean, I am too. I mean, it, but it, it's kind of neat to see, like, the 96 Olympic team, you know, the the 2004 or whatever Olympic team. You know, it, it, it's it, it's pretty cool. But, of course, my daughter's a big Chris, so she wants to – she's like, I just want the outfits. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, gymnastics, we, we always lost to what? China, usually. Yeah, Those yeah. Are, like, they're huge into gymnastics. Yeah. So, like, I think it was 1996 was the one I was watching when China actually beat us by, like, a point and a half. Okay. And there was this one girl, uh, Allie. Uh, she pretty much lost it for him. I kind of feel bad saying it, but. <laughs> wow. But she, like, she, she made so many mistakes. But I, I couldn't even imagine feeling 
this woman, you know, now she's a woman because she's probably like 20 something now, but she went through so much to get, like, if you're number one in the world, then you go to the Olympics and you like biff your actual routine that you've been doing pretty much for years. Yeah. Like right at the tail end. It kind of, you know what, it, 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 it kind of, it's a very much a comparison to life. You could do so much for everybody. And then the last like a couple years, you could just like shit the bed. <laughs> yeah. I mean, preparation is key. Practice, practice, practice. But, uh, you know, some people are made for the, for the limelight and some aren't. And uh, it's something that Mike Tyson said too. He goes, whenever he was training, there was one of his training partners just beat the piss out of him all the time. And uh, somebody asked him, he's like, well, what do you think about that guy beating you, you know, in, in practice rounds? He goes, well, he goes, he can beat me in here, but it's a different, it's a different game whenever you get under the lights and everybody's yelling. And he goes, that's where, that's where I win. You know, he, that's, it's a, it's a different thing whenever all those people are watching you and the pressure is on, you know, how, how do you handle that? So. Yeah, it, it, it's kind of funny. And, um, I'm kind of like in a nostalgic time right now with, with Taekwondo because the past, what, four years, I've been top <clears throat> of my game, like in my bracket and stuff. And bro, I got no state titles this year. You know, I, I, I got a couple medals out of the, <clears throat> the tournament season, but I'm like, wow. Yeah. You know, this is the first time where I'm actually like getting beat. <laughs> Why do, you, tough. why do you think that is? Well, for, for one, I, I'm not putting as much time as these guys are. You know, that's, that's definitely one. Um, I could, I, I, I think I kind of got lazy in my craft. And, you know, it's either, but, but I'm also, you know, starting my own school, you know, doing my own academy stuff and, and putting more into Krav and trying to stimulate that, right. that, right. you know, the Taekwondo has really, unfortunately, taken a back seat because I do love it, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's something that happens. You, mm -hmm. know, you have so much on your plate that something's got to take a back seat. They, I think Rogan's the one who always says it about the UFC fighters. It's like, if you're not 100% in it, don't fight because that's mm -hmm. the, that's when things start going crazy as far as like injuries and um just getting your ass whooped <laughs> lack of better terms yeah because yeah. you guys are doing it every day you know that's like shit whenever i roll with jeff he he does it every day i do it like three times a week and he whoops my ass you know yeah yeah there are there are levels and not only that he's has years of experience but um yeah Exactly. Yeah, it, 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 it's uh, what did you say? People count. Uh, he said he watched Greater on Netflix. It's a documentary about um, athletes who were kind of born athletic, and then people who got to work for it a little bit more. It's about a football player. Yeah, Kayla, me too. She Have says, you ever seen the, uh, the like the Netflix uh, show about the Ray Kroc story? I don't. No. Like, you know, Ray Kroc, McDonald's. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so um, actually Chris got me into it, and I can't remember the name of the movie. I really should have researched it a little bit before I started talking, but that's just how we do. And uh, <laughs> All good. But it, it, it's, um, it, it's, it's pretty neat because he actually stole uh, McDonald's from the McDonald's brothers. Yeah, I, I remember we, you and I talked about this before. Oh, probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he 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 just he just had that tenacity to do it, and and I think you know, e even right now. So there's a lot of people that are, I think, with this whole um, pandemic and stuff, sitting at home. It's almost getting to a put up or shut up type deal. Like, do you want to succeed when you go through when you come out of this? Do you want to come out a different person? Or are you like re reinventing your life? Yeah. Sitting at home, just trying to see what you're going to do. 
So or, I'll tell you one thing though, man, it forces you to, to be in your own head. You know, it, it forces you to really think about some things and prioritize and cause you know, you, you don't have, you don't have other things to be doing. Um, but, but no, I, I, I get that. I get that. I just don't want to talk about the pandemic at all. <laughs> all right. Uh, last one. There was a great meme that I seen. It was, uh, it was a face mask over an ear hole. Okay. That's <laughs> when you're sick of hearing about the pandemic. Yeah. Was, yeah. <laughs> give me, give me two of those. I want two, I need earmuffs. I need earmuffs. <laughs> oh, Jesus. But, but seriously, like the soul searching thing is, is pretty cool. Um, for me, it's the, man, I don't know. Like back to what we were saying, when you start diving into something, some other things fail. Like yeah, my motivation, man. I mean, I'm, I'm really like what I was doing for months on a day to day basis it, it has changed so much that I'm like, oh my gosh, what do I do now? Like, yeah, it was nice to get back in the studio and make some t-shirts and stuff. And that was pretty cool. Cause I was like, oh, this is my space, you know? And, but also like the good things about like really holding my kids and wrestling around with them and doing those type of things. Like that's, that's pretty cool too, but it's, it's brand new still. It's like, gosh, it's different. It's different. It reminds, this, this time reminds me whenever I finished grad school, because whenever I was going through grad school, like that's all I did. I, I worked, did homework and that's it. Like rinse and repeat. Um, and then you, then you finish it and then you have all this time that you have to <laughs> occupy. Yeah. You know, th there were hours upon hours that you had to now occupy. Um, so yeah, I think a lot of people struggle with that is I know, Personally, like we talked about the routine. I've been a full yeah. week in my new routine. I feel great. You know, I, I'm getting up early, going to bed at a reasonable time, reason. and, and just making sure that I stick to that routine on a daily basis. I'm, you know, like I said, no, like I said. wake up at 6, you're, you're reading by 6.30, writing by 7.15, doing my Duolingo at 7.45, and then starting work at 8 o'clock. I mean, that's... That's kind of what, what I've been, I've been doing and, and it's helped me a ton just with my own headspace because whenever I don't have a routine, it is, it is hell after, after I do it for a couple, couple days, it's just like, what the fuck are you doing, man? Yeah. Like sleeping in and stuff like that. I'm like, this is, you almost lose your identity, you know? And I think that's yeah. what people struggle with is, is creating a new identity, not, not a new identity, but really it is. It's, it's creating something new very quickly. Um, and and it, I think personally, I struggle with that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what's the timeline for that? Cause I feel like, you know what, I'm going to create this new person yeah, exactly. and then I'm going to have to go back to what I was before. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and it's going to be short lived. So you got to also understand that going into it. Um, and, and that's, you know, you have to give yourself some leeway sometimes. Um, I, I know that we talk about being hard charging and sticking to routines and sticking to things, but you also have to be able to adapt and change. Just like we talked about last week was you got to adapt to win, whether that's in your own headspace, whether it's at work, uh, with your family, things you just have to adapt and you got to be able to do it quick. Yeah. Just have but, to, but that's, that's, that's pretty it's, hard. It's, it's a, it's a skill. Yeah. But, to, you know, for it to be forced, like, I would much rather do that on my own. Like, if I want <laughs> Of course. But none of us have a choice. None of us have a choice. We still got two more weeks of this at least um, before we're allowed to really do stuff. So, like, why not start today? I mean, it's Friday, but who cares? You know? Start. Okay. Don't, uh, don't start, all right. You know? I'll, I'll kind of put it to you like this. Like, say you're, you're getting off work at 4.30. Do you, are, are you the type of guy that works all the way to 4.30? Or do you, like, like 3.30, you're like, okay. Because you don't want to dive into something where you're like, oh, I, well, I really don't have time to put my, my all, so I don't want to half-ass it. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
it, I guess it depends on what projects I'm working on. If I'm being honest, um, if, if there are projects that, that have timelines that I know that need to be met, I'll try and yeah. get all of that work done. I'll work up until four 30. Um, but if I have lots of smaller projects that I'm working on and, and I want to cut out at three 30, you know, I will. Yeah. But that's a timeline that you could set. See, so I'm kind of in a space like, okay, do I want to reinvent myself and try to do something different? And then all of a sudden, let's say two weeks from now, like, it was like, Hey, guess what? You're going back to work, you know? Well, yeah. And, and that's, that's, a, that's something, if you're not struggling with not having a routine, then why change it? Like I'm talking about if you're struggling with your, with your headspace and, and like kind of getting down on yourself cause you're not doing shit like create a routine. Create, yeah. Okay. Create something like that. If, if you're not struggling with it, then, then don't put yourself through the hardship and then create more anxiety for yourself. Like that's the last thing we need right now is more stuff to worry about. Um, so that, and, and that's why I had to do it for myself. Cause I was just worrying about dumb shit that, that didn't need to be worried about. So um, <laughs> that, that's all I'm saying. The time is putting more anxiety on me than anything else. <laughs> time? Time. It, well, it, it's because, all right, I want to do more. I want to get put back in, in a routine, you know. But really, my routines, they, they were set by me, but kind of like there was a choice either to do them or not. But now they're like, okay, I have to do them. Yeah. So, so I got you know, 30 students waiting for me to get back into the gym, right? So there's going to come a point, but like, hey, look, starting class Monday, you know, and I got to go back to what I was doing for almost a year before this all happened. Yeah. Sean was just saying he had to create a new routine. No, I hear what you're saying. Absolutely. And it was, it's, it's like, you know, now you're forced into it. And, and whenever we're forced into anything, we hate it. <laughs> hate it. Hate it. Hate it. But sometimes, like... Yeah, also, too, like, what your routine is... Go ahead. No, like, the, the, what I was going to say, the force, but whatever is the motivation behind it. So I think if I can get past the motivation, like, be like, okay, yeah, 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 this oh, is it. Your, your motivation for your routine before was building a business. Yeah. So that was your big motivation was building a business. So of course that you're going to, you're going to love that routine. Well, the, 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 I mean, partly it was, it was business building, but I really, I'm all about relationship building, you know? So because I stand behind a lot of the things that I do and what I do for people, uh -huh. like, it's, it wasn't like, a, I guess in a sense, it wasn't a monetary business venture. You know what I mean? It was more like, okay, what else can I do to affect more people? That was my motivation. Like the business aspect, that's just, that was the, the after effects, you know, of it. So what, let me ask you this then, why not substitute something that does the exact same thing now? Like? I don't know. That's your soul searching. <laughs> that ain't mine. I'm just here to ask questions. But you know what I mean? Like if it's going to feed the goals that were motivating you before, why not substitute it with something that you can, you can uh, impact folks now in a different way, like you're doing right now. Like yeah, part yeah. Of your team. Right, right. So because impacting others and it feeds yeah. to your bigger goal. Yes. Yes. So, so like when we talked about starting this whole podcast, like it was for that purpose. And, yep. and now that we're getting back into that, because remember we were on a hiatus for like three weeks. Ah. So, yeah. So now that we're getting back into that, that's, that's a sense of normalcy for me right now. And, and I like this portion, but there's still one, one piece uh, to the puzzle of, oh, yeah. of me and what I want to do. Um, so, so now I think, I don't know, it's more conversation, conversation with the family, just like me and my wife was just talking about this. Like we, we need to get back to, to some of the family things that we were doing before. Like I'm getting this, this camper ready, 
for, for us to start thinking about like future camping trips. Um, we want to get back into, into church and starting to, you know, bring some more positivity to our family. Um, like we're talking more, we're having a lot of good conversations and, and that's really where my motivation is, but there's still a little hint behind me, like, okay, I'm going to get this part started. And then I'm going to have, unfortunately, I'm going to have to go back and share uh, my, my life with other people. And how is that going to affect my family going back to that? I think you just got to lay the groundwork now and be totally 100% honest. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, they're, they, they're not dumb. They know. I know Chelsea knows that you're going to mm -hmm. have a time now. She, she's, she knows that it's not going to be fair again at some point. <laughs> as far as the time goes yeah i mean it's it's reality it's reality of an entrepreneur it's a reality of of somebody who's working full time and then has a has a business they're trying to grow as well for for their personal side um you know i think it's just that honesty piece and being being can candid with everyone that's oh, all yeah you yeah. know the, and, and we're gonna go on 17 camping trips this summer and then all of a sudden it's like Where's dad? We haven't even went on one camping trip. Like, what's going on? It's like the dad who promises everything and then never does dick. Like, I don't want to be that dude. Yeah, don't be that guy. <laughs> My parts just came in yesterday, too. Yeah, what do you have to do to the camper? I've never, like, I've never dealt with a camp. It's a pop up camper where you wind yeah. it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's a pop up. So, um, I, the, the springs popped out of it. So, I got to replace the springs that actually bring it up. So, Listen, does what make make you feel guilty? Sharing the sharing time or she's typing in. Okay. She's the she's the chat moderator. Yeah, she's awesome, by the way. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Chelsea says I'll never allow you to be that dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know yeah. she won't. She'll hold your back <laughs> to the fire. Um no doubt. But yeah, so the camper, I got to uh, replace the springs in it so that it's able to, when you crank it, it, it goes up. Okay. What kind of camper yeah. is it? I mean, I know it's a pop-up camper, but like name? Any? Viking. Viking. Put yeah. some decals on that sucker. Some what? Some decals. A big Viking. Whoa. With a beard. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll tell you the story. You name it. I got to tell you the story. This is so good. Alyssa will appreciate this. So we're, <laughs> so I, I make stuff up sometimes, right? If you, if you haven't noticed. Um, so we're, we're at dinner and uh, it was at Timber Creek up in Grove City. Oh yeah. We're having dinner with friends and uh, we get on the subject and I was like, yeah, the Vikings, those, those were the first gladiators. <laughs> Everybody's what? like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I was like, yeah, seriously, they, like they were the first ones. They, you know, blah, blah, blah. I made up this whole story. I don't remember the story now, but it was a whole thing. And I let this thing, I got actually, because Alyssa's like, that's bullshit. I'm like, what, you're not going to believe me? You're just, just going to, you don't even know. You don't know. So like, I do know. <laughs> She's like, you're so full of shit. That's not true. And I let this thing ride for weeks. I just let it ride for weeks. And it came up again, like a week later. I was like, no, seriously, look it up. Like I was, I was on this thing. <laughs> it's not true. It's not true at all. But I just had the conviction, like, yeah, it was true. <laughs> oh, you know what? We <laughs> just had because she because she disagreed with me. We just had the same and exact conversation about the Ninja Turtles. Well, you make stuff up about Leonardo or what? Well, see, so we were oh. going through them and. <laughs> I hit something there, <laughs> and 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 Chelsea's like, "Well, who's the blue one?" And I was, I, I just spit out like the first one that came to my mind, but like with emphasis, yeah, like yes, it's him. And she was like, "No, it's not." And I said, "Look, whatever. I know. I've been watching it since the you know eighties." And she goes, "She fact checks me." <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, I love. That. <laughs> it's like no, that's Donatello. What? No, nah, that's Michelangelo. <laughs> that's funny though. Sometimes but then I come back and be like, you know what? Yeah, yeah, I told you that's exactly what I said. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what I said. 
Got to be conviction about it. That's all. <laughs> yeah, it was funny, man. Okay, yeah, those are the first gladiators. And they all looked at me like, you're an idiot. <laughs> that makes zero sense. But, oh, well. It was well, funny. I'm glad you had good enough friends to be like, you're an idiot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, those are the good. Fr- those are good friends, man. Yeah. I don't think you're right on that one, bud. I don't need a bunch of yes men around me. Yeah. Well, I also don't want to be the smartest person in the room either. You never will be. Yeah. <laughs> Especially hanging with the Jordans. Whew. I know. <laughs> Tough to keep up. <laughs> Tough to keep up. It's all right, though. So what else is new? What are you reading right now? Anything good? No. <laughs> um, what, I, actually, are you what, are you, so, what are you occupying time with? Um, I've been off of the podcast thing because I think everybody's having the same kind of freaking verbiage. Yeah. Uh, you know, actually uh, started reading back in the, into the Bible again and started thinking about some of the, the scriptures that I that I knew and um, just started doing that. Just just really just like, like I gotta tell you, I'm kind of in a freaking lull. Like, what do I do with myself? Like, I don't, I don't want to be forced to reinvent myself. And it, it, it's, it, it's, I'm being forced to do so. So I'm trying to see, like before I used to figure out, okay, workouts, um, things for cardio classes, um, some Krav Maga trainings. And- why not, why not just be totally okay with what you're doing then? Like give yourself the leeway to say in your own mind space is like, this is only for a month. We'll be back to the normal routine soon. And just enjoy what you have right now. You know, don't yeah. create the new routine. I know earlier I said create a new routine, but like if that's, if you don't, if you really don't want to, you're not struggling with it other than the fact that like you just feel like you're not busy enough, just, just be okay with what you have going on then. Yeah. Well, that was, yeah. that was something that, that, um, that Jeff Lynn told me about whenever we had one of our coaching sessions, because like, I felt like I had to do everything on my checklist before I was fulfilled, you know, and in my head, that's, that's, those were the prongs in order to get to fulfillment. You know, you had to do X, Y, Z, one, two, three, before you could feel happy. Yeah. You need to give yourself the chance to not do something, you know, don't do these one, two, three things and see what it feels like. Give yourself permission to not do them. Yeah, but, it, you know, it, it, it goes back to us being a, a, a checklist society, you know, well, you know, it's like, okay, I got to do this, boom. Seasons of life is what Sean Thomas said. Seasons of life. My man. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's definitely there. It, it, but it, this is, like I said, this is new. This is too new. <laughs> I'll tell you, um, what, I've, I've been going to the store and every, I mean, I've been out wearing my mask but we we went to Lowe's we went to the store we've been to Target I mean we got to get back to normalcy you know so we're we're doing it under the guidelines of what we have to do with a mask um waiting in line staying six feet apart from people for now um you know going in one way one aisle down like our our grocery store is now one-way streets yeah yeah so um you know it I don't know. I I like, I like being out though. (laughs) Yeah. Got a new dog. Oh, you got another, you got a dog. Nice. What kind of dog? Well, it was told to me that it was a German short hair pointer, but she, she coos like a hound. So I think somebody got creative and (sighs) made, and made a, a a coon hound German short hair. (laughs) Oh my God. So I'm doing these master classes with um, Goodsby and uh, Sean. I just sent it to you the other day. But um, anyhow, they did the campaign for um, a for California ASPCA. I think is what it was like to neuter your dog. Yeah, and the narrative was hilarious <laughs> because <laughs> the the wife is talking to the husband and says. You know, Brian's out of control. He's running all over the neighborhood. He was over at Alice's house again last night. 
And the dad goes, well, what do you want me to do? Put him on a chain? And the wife goes, well, if that's what it takes to take care of this. And then they hear, hear something at the door and they look up at the top of the door and you can't see anything. And then they pan down to the bottom where the dog door is. And he, and the dog walks in and, and he's like, new to your dog. He's not going to do it himself. And then he walks out. <laughs> they were talking about the dog. <laughs> I was dying. But they're an ad agency. They're like, they're behind uh, Nike, the Nike Just Do It. Um, they're behind Got Milk. They're behind a lot of these things. That, the Sega guy. Perfect. The guy, Sega. Yeah. Yeah. It was a, awesome. That was a, what was it? A five second commercial? I think it was a five second commercial that nobody would run, but they kept that, that snip at the very end. Um, and, and that's where the Sega thing comes from. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Silverstein, Rich Silverstein and Jeff Goodsby, I think are their names. Hey, keep talking. Um, yeah. Talk to these guys. I need to, I need to grab my charger. Sorry. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. So this dog, I mean, it's pretty cool. It's pretty decent having another dog for really got it for the, for the other dog kind of like burn themselves out, but I say it all to go ahead and get out and do things and go back to what I was doing before when I got my initial GSP. So George St. Pierre. Yeah, George St. Pierre. So so like we got we got this German show here pointer for one to go hunting, but this was all pre-kids. And <laughs> it kind of like Man. yeah, masked it up. Anyway, so the kids came back to back and now the dog gets fat and lazy, but we still get to go out. And so now I got two dogs to take them out into the woods and let them roam. So you hunted. Say again? I didn't know you hunted. You froze on me. I said, I didn't know. You, you didn't know I hunted? No. Not yeah, at all. Yeah. So, yeah, I dabbled into it. I really liked uh, archery. Yeah. You got a bow? Yeah. Like, that was the best season. You have a bow? I did. Had an old uh, PSE that I bought for a hundred bucks. Nice. That's a good deal. Yeah. So like, just like a lot of hunter people, they always want to get the next best thing, right? Oh yeah. So, so he was looking at into another bow, and he was like, "I just want to get rid of this." So, got it. But there's a good story about the the bow. Tell so, me. <laughs> I never went I, I never went bow hunting before and I go to um place in Newcastle well going towards Newcastle um to kind of like get it strung and yeah to put a a, a different sight on it to, to to put a new quiver on it things like that yeah get it tuned up right uh is it shooter showcase yeah that's right that's yeah that's where I go yeah um uh, you know what they were awesome so here I am, Puerto Rican guy in the middle of nowhere, Northwest Pennsylvania. I walk into this place. I don't have the bow on me because I didn't know if you can bring it inside the store, right? <laughs> so I, <laughs> totally. So I, I walk in and I, he, the guy was like, hey, you know, can I help you? Super nice dude. And I was like, look, um, I've never done this before. I got a bow. He said, well, where is it? I said, it's in the car. He said, we'll bring it in. I said, I didn't know if I could, you know, like, it was like, <laughs> it was like a firearm situation. Like, That's funny. <laughs> you you going to pull a bow on a guy? Yeah, I did. That's a messed up move. You, <laughs> you're an unstable individual if you pull a bow on me. <laughs> We're like, that's it. This is a stick up. And just <laughs> hopefully, hopefully it's a compound. You got to hold it back. Jeez. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it was it was a compound. Okay, um, I, I I I put different sights on it. Um, nice. I I had a peep and a kisser. Which yeah, I, and I heard you only do one or the other, but this guy had both. What do you? Uh, yeah, I don't know. 
So he, he, he strung it up. They're under new management now, by the way. Oh, really? As of like two or three years ago, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely been longer than that since I've been over there. Sure. But, uh, but yeah, so went in, he freaking, he tightened it all up. He, it, it, it was like 45 pound with like a 20 pound let off. Like it was sweet. <laughs> and he's like, go shoot some stuff. Like he, he sent me to the back with some, with some arrows and was like, have at it. And I, I said, this is the coolest thing ever. Like the dude was so nice. Like people, like if you walk in, like I don't look like the hunter, right? I don't look like this is something you that you're not white and with overalls on. Like, what does a hunter look exactly, like? Exactly, exactly. Okay. This, I think I, I, I might have had a flannel on just so I could fit in. <laughs> so, I dusted off Are a flannel, just, walked in there, and then this is like, what happened. Both know that, huh? Alyssa's like, when are we going to have the wives episode? I said, you guys are both welcome. They know it. <laughs> well, jump on. <laughs> That's funny about the bow, though. So, but did you ever take it out in the woods? Or did you just shoot yeah. it in the woods? Did you yeah. ever kill anything with it? No. <laughs> did you ever shoot in the woods? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> How many times did you even take it in the woods? Okay, so uh, I once <laughs> no it, it, it was probably about four or five times oh, okay but honestly I, I i i honestly just loved freaking being out in the woods and just sitting there rocking in a tree because i was in a climber oh, okay so i had this old loggy climber that was super heavy that was given to me too and i made all types of noise because it's clanking all over the place right nah yeah, and I would just sit there and climb trees, just wrapping, just wrapping my arm around a tree, and just. Oh, you didn't, <laughs> you didn't have the top portion too. No. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a dangerous. That's a dangerous one there. Well, there's a story about that. <laughs> Don't you have at least the strap to to no. go up? You just hug the tree. This I hug the tree. This is just how I did it. Like, <laughs> bro, you're lucky to be here. No kidding. So did you even like ratchet strap it on? You never tied it on any of that? Uh, th that that's a thing. Oh God. <laughs> so, I'm so I'm so nervous even talking about it. <laughs> like I'm, I'm sweating just thinking about Bro. Oh. This is not this like I, I wanted to, I to find out. <laughs> but people need to tell people, like, you need you need a you need your harness on. I had that. Okay. So you had a so, harness. So you're pushing. I had a harness. Pulling that up the tree, right? Like you're. No. So I had the vest. I had the vest one, you know, all wrapped on me as I was climbing up the tree. And then I would wrap it. Well, what happens if you fall whenever you're climbing the tree? So that happened. And. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. So tell me about that. So. So. I, I, I'm not a, a I know, Joe. What, an arborist. Guy. Is that what it is? Like a tree specialist? <laughs> arborist? Yes. Yeah. I'm not one, right? <laughs> Got it. So I found a tree. I was like, oh, man, this is cool. No branches. Like, Loose I'm climbing up. So I guess that, huh? Loose bark? No. Okay. It was a slick maple. Okay. Right? It just rained. <laughs> nice. So I'm climbing up this thing and, and just like, all right, I got it, you know, because there's nothing in the way. I don't have to cut any branches or nothing like that, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm going up. It was like perfectly straight. I marked out my, my uh, 20, 30, and 40 spots with ribbons, you know? Nice. You really um, it. So I freaking go up it, and then all of a sudden I lose it. Start sliding down this. It was probably a good 18 feet. Oh my God. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> the whole time, I'm like trying to grip the tree as, as much as I can. My arms are raw. Like, just like. <laughs> where is, I just keep where? thinking, like, don't. Yeah. I, I'm like, don't break my legs. Don't break your legs. Sorry. <laughs> 
worried about your legs. Where's the bow? Is it still on the ground? Like, did you at least have a rope that you were going yes, to Yes, I did. Off? Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, so it, I freaking slide down the thing. And Bell says you're never allowed to teach our kids how to hunt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah. So, let me, let me, let me tell you, like, that's the, that's the scariest thing on a climber because you do slip on occasion. Yeah. I have the one where you, I'm, I have the top section and the bottom section. And the one time I was, I was climbing up just like you, it was rain. It rained. And uh, they had these little foot straps on them, but all they are is just like, you know, on a backpack where you, you kind of pull them to, to make them tighter. Yeah. Yeah. The exact same concept, but just they're for your feet. So over your boots and as you're climbing up, sometimes they'll loosen and one of them loosened completely and fell through to the ground. Nice. So I'm like, what the hell do I do now? You know, it's, <laughs> So, I mean, I was trying to do it with one foot and then I remembered that I had an extra one and I just, I had to do it in the tree, but luckily I had my damn harness on while it was, a, it, it was attached to the tree. How do you, so, how do you take that up? You have, like, to, like, you have to keep moving it up as you move up. You're going to, yeah, yeah. You got to like put it on, you got to put it through the D loop, put it around the tree and then as you're climbing, you have to move it up and then tighten it. And then it's a whole process. It's annoying. Yeah, no. I did that while I was up in the tree. <laughs> yeah, not good. God. It was did great. You have, did you have the one the 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 harness that like came the whole way around and around your legs? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It was like a, a seat seat one. Also kept the knife on me just in case I had to cut it off. All right, just in case you Got it. Got it. Yeah. <sighs> My God. Yeah, it, 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 it was scary. But, well, hey. hey. What you hear about guys falling out of trees and stuff while they're climbing or getting out is because they are they don't have that harness attached to the tree. Yeah. Well, luckily, because I, 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 I never really went by myself. There was a couple times I went by myself, but this yeah. time I wasn't. So I freaking, I call out for my buddy. I'm, I, I got one foot that I can't get out. Right. So I got my hand on the ground. So I'm almost in a handstand position. <laughs> You're oh my God. <laughs> so screaming for him to come out here and help me. He said, Bro, hold on, I gotta take a picture. And I was <laughs> Yes. I love it. I love that. Tell me you still have the picture. I need that. No. <laughs> but it was a great experience. I loved it. I can't believe you almost fell out of a damn tree. Oh yeah. Whew. But I think I stunk too bad. So I, I like I would see a bunch of deer. I drew on one. It was like a whole batch. And I turned around. By the time I turned around, like they did the whole snorting thing and stomped the feet and they were gone. Yeah. They're they're tough to kill, man. I don't I don't care what anybody says, especially for a bow hunter, because they have to get in so close. Um it's tough, man. They smell you a mile away. I don't care yeah. what scent cover you put on. I don't care what you wash your clothes in. I mean, I leave my clothes outside while I'm like kind of preparing to go hunting. So I'll leave my clothes outside so they don't smell like whatever I have inside. But you still have to get in your car and go. And yeah, and that's that's their main sense that they can alert themselves, you know, themselves and others is through their smell. So their their smell is ridiculous like a dog yeah, but no it it, it it was great and then um did the pheasant hunting thing that's when i first got the dog i really enjoyed that too pheasant hunting is fun it's you have to get to the right place though like you just walk around the woods trying to go pheasant hunting it's a little difficult yeah it, it, it was it, it was cool like we went out like i'd go out with a couple friends on like the first day when they first let the pheasants out <clears throat> but they don't fly like they just run across the ground. Pheasants fly. I know, but not the new farm farm raised ones, you know. Oh, you went to a you went to a place that had them and they released them. Yeah, well, like in, in, in the game lands around here. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. They fly. Yeah, sometimes. But most of the times they're running across the ground. 
I'll tell you what scares the piss out of me when I'm whenever I'm walking through the woods. Ruffed grouse. Oh yeah. They they will wait until you are damn near on top of them. Yeah. And then they take off. Oh my god. It's the loudest sound in the woods. Like the way that yeah. they beat their wings against themselves. It's incredible and it scares the piss out of me every time. Every yeah. time. So my dog when he flaps his ears it sounds like that. <laughs> really? <laughs> He's got the big floppy ears. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Is it an older dog? Is it a puppy? What is it? So th this dog, well, they said it was two years old, but this thing is like more like 10, 10 months old. Really, you know? Go ahead. Huh? Nothing. I was talking to Chris on, on the chat. He was supposed to go to Australia. I was wondering if he actually made it there. But yeah, no, the, the dog, the dog, I, I want to say the dog's probably about a year. They said okay. two, but, but it, so it, he's, it's, he's outside trained and everything. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a it's a girl. Oh, she is okay. Cool. She's super smart. She's she's a lot lighter, but they they love being outside. But I, she does some real puppyish stuff. So I'm assuming that she's younger. Okay. Like they're not. She she didn't like the water like my my other dog. He loves the water. Yeah, they were saying a lot of the shelters are empty right now. People are getting a lot of dogs and cats, animals. Yeah. Yeah. Which is cool. That's cool. But just like you said, what happens when it turns back to normal? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I can't take care of it. Yep. Yeah, yeah exactly. Or, or or saying that they, they have to move, you know, like they got to get another job somewhere. Right, right. Because that's how we got this one. Like these people had to move and they couldn't take the dog. So. Yeah. Gotcha. Kind of helped out the situation. What's up with you besides running freaking 50 miles? Yeah. Um, I mean, work is pretty, pretty steady right now. I would hate to be a new guy in my industry. That's what I keep telling everybody. Um, new guys are not doing well. Um, but, but myself, I've been, I've been doing my job for seven, eight years now. Um, so I, my customer base is already established for the most part. Um, I have a lot of blanket order business that, that we've been taking care of. So that's all been good. Um, as far as personally, we've been doing, uh, doing a lot of, uh, you know, family games, the puzzles, uh, Brielle and I've been watching this show lost in space on Netflix, uh, found out the other day that it's an act it's actually a remake from yeah. a, from a really old <laughs> Like in the seventies? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. didn't I didn't It I was black and white. Was it black and white? Yeah, I think it was black and white. This is certainly an updated version because it it uh has a lot of CGI in it, so the robots are just badass. I love it. I love the show. We we watched it two nights ago. It was season two, episode ten. We get finished with it, and Brielle's like, oh, I want to watch another one. I want to watch another one. And I'll never watch – I just don't let her watch two, just trying to um, – more or less what I'm trying to do is just teach her, like, limits. You know, just because there's nothing to do in the morning, you still got to create your own limits. Um, yeah. So, anyhow. So, last night we go to watch the show again, and that was the last episode. Ah. Season two, episode ten was the last one. So, uh, we finished it. Um, but it, it's, it's a cool show, be, and, and I like it, too, because it's, it's kind of sci-fi, and I've been into sci-fi for a while now, um, ever since I started that Expanse series, which I'm on the last book of that, too. So, like, I'm, run, I'm running out of, uh, of my sci-fi, and I'm going to have to start a new series, which is really sad. My characters are all dying in the book. Another sci-fi series? Yeah, The, uh, the Expanse. Is the, hey, what, uh, everybody's talking about this Macmillan. Macmillan? Yeah. What's Macmillan? I, it, it, it's, it's oh, a yeah, new the, Monopoly, the Monopoly one. Yeah. We watched that. That was, that was cool. Yeah. It's such a simple, like an internal, whenever you, whenever you talk about business, you talk about internal controls and how you, like you want to have internal controls to control processes and standard operating practices. So one of their internal controls. Now was, don't give it up. <laughs> yeah. But one of these internal controls was so flawed that you're like, 
this guy wasn't a genius. He just took advantage of a stupid rule. That, like that's all that happened. And, but it does go deep and it gets into the mob and yeah. it's, it's a, it's a very interesting uh, uh, documentary, but Alyssa and I were talking like this probably could have been about two episodes. Yeah. Probably <laughs> could have been about two episodes. Um, but I do remember that Monopoly game. And I thought, cause I was a kid whenever it came out. Like I even thought whenever I was a kid and I remember having this thought was like, if you just sold yours to somebody, cause we were always told like boardwalks on the East coast and park places on yeah. the West coast. Yeah. Like, that was something that we were always told. So I'm like, well, if somebody over here just says out there that, Hey, I have boardwalk. And then this guy over here says, hey, I got Park Place. Let's split the cash. Done. Well, you think about, like, the internet wasn't as affluent as it is now. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But they were, they were talking about the guy. They were selling pieces on eBay, you know? So yeah. eBay was a thing. Yeah. So you could have sold them on eBay or something like that. Um, I'm big yeah. into the mob stuff. Why? I, I, I don't know. You like it? I do. I do. I what like the mob. What's about it? it? Well, for one, it's got a New York backdrop, right? And then my godfather who baptized me, he was in the mob. And um, so it, 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 it's always, always intrigued me. Like, I like the whole family aspect of it. They did have a lot of rules, a lot of order back in the day. Um, it, 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 was, it, it was pretty much all over New York in the papers and everything because like you couldn't open up a paper and not see like the Gotti family or, you know, um, what happened, you know, with somebody trying to take a hostile takeover, things of that nature. So it was pretty cool. So, um, Mike Tyson has a podcast. Have you seen this? Um, I know that he has a podcast, but I've not watched it. Oh, it's really cool. It's called hot boxing with Mike. He's a big marijuana proponent guy. Yeah, He's got, he, He's, he's, he's got money into um, his own fields, his own uh, THC products and things like that. Right. But um, he had uh, a, a soldier from the Gambino family on there. And Mike Tyson grew up in, in that element as well. What's, you a, know, soldier, what's a soldier in the mob? Like? Oh, so, so like a soldier is is someone who does like pretty much not a flunky, but you're a soldier for the mob. Then you have lieutenant captains, and then you got, you know, the the heads. So like a soldier is front line guy. Right, okay. right. Like they're doing the business. Okay. They're doing things. They're either making you money or taking money. So he 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 had he had one of the most famous guys on there from the uh, I want to say it's the Gambino family, but. It, 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 it's it, it's just always intrigued me. Like I always were, I was always big, like autobiographies and stuff that I've read were all New York based people. And it was all about hoods and hoodlums and how these people made it. And, you know, that, that was just, yeah, just my, my, my niche. <clears throat> yeah. Gotcha. So like, like, like the, the Malcolm X, the, uh, you know, like the autobiography of that nature yeah so the guy's on on here he's from the gambino family what did he talk about uh he, he he talked about how there were some people that you knew they were really intimidating like you walk into a room and you didn't know if you were walking out you know and like it's it's crazy it's, so he said some of the stuff that that uh is depicted in movies is actually reality based so uh, of course, there's a lot of Hollywood and things, but like, I guess the mob. An example. Say again. What's an example of something that was like that was real, and it's in a movie? Did so he, did he say anything or? Yeah. So so like, I don't know. It, like, it, if you ever seen The Godfather's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So you know how when you go to get in a car, if you had someone in the back seat, you sat in the front seat. You were nervous. Oh, uh, okay. So, it, well, because that's who's going to pop you, the guy in the back yeah. seat, right? So he was talking about a time where the family called him 
and said, hey, come on, you know, the family wants to see you. And he was like, well, okay. He drops everything and he wants to put him in the front seat. And he's like, I'm, I'm not sitting there. I'm not sitting there. And he's like, no, I'm going to sit back here. I'm not sitting there. Like it, it was just yeah. a whole big thing. But actually the whole deal was a promotion because he was making the mob so much money. But, but and, he, knew. And, huh? he knew though that if you sit in the front seat, like that's not good. Yeah. Yeah, it, it 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 was it was weird. Like like just some of the things that he would talk about. Like you, it's like you were living the the life with with him. Like going through these scenarios, he said everything was was all a respect thing, right? So if you walked into a room and they feel like you've disrespected them, then there's no arguing about it. Like you did it. You have to make it that they believe that you didn't yeah that's a that's a tough business that yeah <laughs> it's just like oh but you know johnny said that you disrespected his mother or something like that right well that yeah. just you know you know that goes to the whole way like you live your life in a certain way and if you live it according to all those rules and everything then you have nothing to worry about right yeah, but if you if you're living outside of those rules, then you got things to worry about. You got things to look over your shoulder about. You got things to be nervous about. So in in that type of atmosphere, man, you would have to run exactly according to rules. Yep, toe to line. Talk about like totalitarianism. Yeah, you know where they the the leader calls the shots, and that's what it is. You right. don't ask questions. Yeah, yeah. You think that's good for a business? No, no. Just, just like I was saying, um, you can't be the smartest person in the room, you know, or you want to surround yourself by people that are, that are, have the same, the same smarts or even smarter in certain aspects to create a, a good collaboration. Right. That's how I like, like with me and Chris, you know, he has, he has ways that he is, that dude and then but he can't be that dude if i'm not there to help him be that dude you get what i'm saying no i understand what you're saying yeah, yeah. i get that part of it what i'm saying though is like or what i'm asking rather is like in a business you know do you think that you can because obviously it works there were so many mob families like it's just it works so that authoritarian person at the top calling the shots and that, that kind of trickles down through the ranks. Um, you know, to kind of do as I say, don't ask questions. This is just how it is. Um, it also takes a lot of the, uh, the ownership piece away from, let's say that soldier, right? So he, yeah. let's just say for argument's sake, like he kills somebody. Yeah. He doesn't have to feel as guilty about it because it was just an order. It right. takes that personal responsibility away from it. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and there's something to be said about that whenever you like it's it's good in in one aspect because you don't have to like as the leader, you know that they're going to take action because they're fearful of what the the reciprocation is going to be. Yeah. But yeah. as a soldier, if you think you have a better idea then you start to have some sort of resentment for your superior because you're like, this makes no damn sense. Why am I doing it? And then once you would, you know, so in that aspect, it's a negative. Right. So, so to put it, yeah. So like to put it into a family perspective, if I tell my son, somebody punches you in the face, I want you to blast them. If somebody, you know, you don't start the fight, but you finish it. That's it. Like he, he, he's not worrying about what the school is going to do. He's not going to worry about, you know, yeah, I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that, that, that burden off of him. Like, don't worry about what dad's going to do. I want you, if someone, you know, attacks you or puts you in a position of disadvantage, I'm going to be the one that's going to say, go ahead, blast them. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the same, it's the same mentality. Right. Yeah, it's the same, like, father figure telling you what to do, boss telling you what to do. Um, yeah, but, like, like me, I, 
I'm, I'm not a big yeller when it comes to my family. So I don't impose my will on my family. I don't love out of, I, I don't want you to respect me out of fear. I want you to respect me out of love. And I think that that's where, where things got construed. You were more afraid of them because it, it wasn't because you cared about them or it wasn't because you were that person. You were afraid of what will happen if you didn't respect that person. Yeah, that, you know, I think about this too and, it, and, and why um, freeways work and why road systems work is like there's a lot of trust that the other person is going to stay in their lane. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of trust there amongst one another. And that means that we, we uh, as, as humans, staying alive is important to us. Yeah. So that's, that's why those things work. Just like you're talking about, like, it's because he wants to stay alive. You know, if they're going to follow orders because they want to stay alive, they want to make money and things like that. So it's like our value system plays a big role in that. So if, yeah. the, if the values are set by whoever and, you know, that trickles down to you, then, yeah, that, that whole – as a business, that's your, quote, unquote, vision or your mission statement. You know, all of those core values that, that are trickled down to the soldiers, uh, those frontline guys. It's a hard thing to do, though, is to get that top level vision down to a soldier. And it seems like somehow through fear, they were able to do it. Oh, in, yeah. In the mob families. And, and now a lot, even then, um, but now it seems more um, relevant or, or um, accepted to do it more as like you're saying out of love, out of respect yeah. than right. fear to respect. Uh, yeah. it's, a, it's just an interesting way to look at it um, because both work, you know, both, both of those sides work. Uh -huh. Yeah. But what's the right one? <clears throat> well, that's what I'm asking. Yeah. You know, like that, that's really what I'm asking is what is the right one? Because you have dictatorships, you have democracies, you have monarchs, you know, monarchies, you have totalitarian isn't like there's, there's so many schools of thought for population control and to make money. Yeah. is really what, what, what it all comes down to. Um, and having some sort of economy to, to trade with those other folks. And, uh, but they all work. You know I what I mean? It on, it all on works. I think it depends on the relationship. When you start to look at people as not like people, that's when the 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 respect value is not there. So, you know, uh, an example, the Department of Corrections. If you look at a person as a number, as opposed to Johnson, then it's so much easier for you to be detracted from the humanitarian absolutely back. yeah absolutely so like i was always told and i talked about this before that whenever you place handcuffs on someone someone actually loved that person so i mean try to give that that, that person regardless of the uh, of of the offense you got to you got to give them some level of respect to to a point like there's not going to be like, there's still, I have a job to do and this is how it's going to be. Not to say that you're just a number to me, huh? Still got to treat people like people. Right. Right. Yep. But when you do that and don't give them a name, you give them a, a title. Hey, think about this. They, they, they uh, did it in slavery. You know, they were property. They weren't people. Yeah. It, it was like, they, they didn't see them as as a person they didn't see him as diaz they saw him as you're my pro like kind of like you're my truck yeah you're my you're my lawnmower right oh there was no yeah. when it you're dealing with real people it makes it easier to whip them and kill them and get rid of them trade them everything yeah. it's like i treat my lawnmower like shit <laughs> change the oil ever <laughs> yeah I put gas in it, crank it a couple times, good to go. Yeah. I love my Briggs and Stratton. 
It's a good, it's a good, uh, good engine on those things. Yeah. <laughs> Starts up immediately, even after sitting all winter. All winter, same, same oil, same gas. Yeah. <laughs> Wham. <laughs> Fired right up. I mowed my grass twice in, in one week this past week. That never happens. That's, that's a benefit of being home. Yeah. The lawn is taken care of, which I know. There's going to be a garden coming up soon. Yeah, we started our seeds. Oh, yeah? Yeah, we got seeds from uh, fru Frutition, I think is where it's called. And, um, yeah, we started them in these little seed pods. The little seed pods are cool. Like, they come in these little discs. We went up to uh, Agway up in Grove City. Yeah. There's these little discs that you get. Um, and then – I got a potty. What's that? I got a potty. All right, go ahead. I'll, I'll keep talking about it. <laughs> go ahead. Go potty. Anyhow, there's um, – at Agway, they have these little discs. And you, you put them in a big plastic tray. They're like, I don't know, yay big. Jiffy is the brand name of these things. And um, you put them in there. I think it was Alyssa did the water. But anyhow, there was, uh, I don't know, like a dozen or so in the, in the tray. And they soak up all the water and they blow up. So they're about, I don't know, maybe a half inch thick. And they blow up to almost an inch and a half, two inches. And then you stuff the seed inside of them. And uh, that's that's what the seed ends up growing in. You don't have to put them in a like a pot or anything. There's a little hole for the seed. So, hey, he's back. And then that's what you end up planting into the garden itself. So you don't have to transplant anything. Um, like you don't have to cut it open and then redo oh, it. So, yeah, so the pods, are you just put them inside. Yeah, so the pods, you put them in this little plastic tray. It soaks up a bunch of water and they blow up to about two inches tall. That's and, strong. Yeah, you stuff the seed inside of it, and that's what you end up planting uh, wherever you're going to plant the, the, the garden. They're really neat. And it was way less messy than trying to put potting soil in these little containers. Um, yeah. You just have these little pods. They were 19 cents each. Ooh. Yeah, so you just buy a shit ton of them and then go from there. Listen, yeah. I want, a, yeah. I, just, I want a big garden now. I want a big one. We have one do all veggies. Yeah, I like it. I want to get back into canning and stuff like that. Are you doing um, beans or anything like that? Something that's going to vine? Yeah. Yeah, we're doing beans. All right. Because I might have some trellises if you – I have a couple extra. Okay. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, it, it, that's not what it's for, but we'll see. Yeah, we've never done the uh, anything that climbs. Yeah. We tried to do the spaghetti squash one time. It just – it took over everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There was some – like, there's some trial and error that we went through with, with some of that stuff. Like, like the lettuce, they consistently got slugs in them. So, like, you would be going to – you'd wash it all off, and then you'd peel off a piece of lettuce, and there's a freaking slug there. Oh, yeah. Which – by the way, cruelty to animals. But if you put salt on a slug, they vanish. Like they they melt. Into yeah. <laughs> I was like, so like put a little salt on them, and I was like, Ooh. he just turned into goo. That was weird. So did you keep it in your lettuce? <laughs> no, I did not keep them in my lettuce. <laughs> I just stopped growing lettuce because I couldn't stand it. And then you can like the whole point of having your own garden was like so you don't have pesticides and shit in there. Yeah. So I found myself putting stuff into the garden that was trying to kill the slugs, but I'm like, what is that doing to me? So I'm just like, I'm just getting rid of the lettuce in general. I mean, the, 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 there's a couple things I used to put like here. Oh, he left. <laughs> Maybe he'll call back in. He must have hit something. Now it's just me. Where are you at? What's up, Chelsea? Chad? Who else is in here? Dan? I'm going to play some music. There he is. Admit. 
Why are you hanging up on people? Yo. Why are you hanging up on people like that? <laughs> they know what happened. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. That's I'm all good. A, a, a freaking uh, a call from the mechanic because I'm getting the van service again for this camping. Uh, gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, hey, I got to get bust into work, actually. Yeah. So, anything, any, uh, any last remarks? Hey, um, so some of the things that I like to say, for one, I like to thank everybody that's sticking with us in the whole Stars podcast. And if they can, you know, click and describe, subscribe and, like, be more interactive with us, we'd love to take this on to the next level and, and can't wait to get in that studio so that we could do some fun stuff in there. Yeah, for sure, man. Um, I'll be excited to have you back in and um, get this thing back to, to our normal and get, uh, get you acclimated to this green screen. <laughs> and the boom mic, and there's some new additions in here, man. It's exciting. Bro, can't wait. Yeah, I'm excited. All you guys out there uh, listening, thank you. Just like Aaron said, thank you for sticking with us. I know it's been a little bit uh, a little goofy out there. Uh, we're trying to remain that consistent piece for you and uh, bringing you some value in your life. So love you guys. Thank you for the support and uh, enjoy the journey. Take care. Later.